Welcome to Backstage with Richard Ridge. We're here at the beautiful new Drama Bookshop located on West 39th Street. And you know my guests from such shows as the 25th Annual Putnam County Spelling Bee, Disaster the Musical, Shrek, Hello Dolly, and Mean Girls. And from TV and film roles such as Law & Order SVU, The Good Wife, and Younger. Well, now she is back on Broadway, giving one of the greatest comedic performances this season as Sarah in director Marianne Elliott's brilliant production of Stephen Sondheim and George Firth's beloved musical, Company. Please welcome Jennifer Samard. I am so excited to be sitting with you here at the brand new, gorgeous drama bookshop. It's beautiful. I love it. On West 39th Street. I love it. This, this book uh, that goes over our heads like that, like it's floating in space. You all have to come here. It's fabulous. This is David Corrins. Oh, come on. I'm going to walk you through the whole entire okay, good. piece before we're done with this. I need a, I need a tour. Show. I need a tour. Okay, we're going to give Jennifer a tour of the drama bookshop. Yeah. You know, you and I go back how many years? Um, <laughs> 19, almost, um, about, <laughs> since 1996. Yeah. Yeah. I love your Perfect Now Change opened August 1st, 1996. So and that was at the West Side. That was at the West Side Theater, yes. And that whole season, I must give you a little anecdote. Um, that following spring, I was nominated for my first award. I didn't even know what they were. I felt like a freshman at the ball for sure. Yeah. It was the Drama Desk Awards, and that's the year How I Learned to Drive was there and won, of course, all the awards. And it, it's so full circle to me that they're back and yeah. on Broadway. So we we must go see our friends and support them. And they don't know that they're. I'm their friend. They'll soon find out. <laughs> They'll soon yeah. gonna find mm -hmm. out. Mm -hmm. It's just so great, though. But what I want to ask you first yeah. is, how excited are you to be back on Broadway <sighs> again, doing what you do best? Thank you. Post shutdown. Oh, I'm thrilled. I'm honored. Yeah. I'm. I feel lucky. I'm so grateful. There's room for me. Uh, so many people, you know, had so much more tragedy and all of that. And so there is a bit of survivor's guilt, you know, yeah. of that. I. People lost their lives, lost loved ones. So anything that we have now is just even that much more a blessing. And the show is such a solve every night and, and therapy and fun. We laugh every night. So I hope people come see it and laugh too because it's a bit of a cathartic release, isn't it? After everything we went through, it was, it was H-E double hockey sticks, wasn't it? It, totally it was. was, it was. Because yeah. I was with you all on opening night. Mm -hmm. It was beautiful, but I'm sure it was magical and bittersweet all at the same time, wasn't it? Well, we had just lost Stephen, and thank goodness he was able to be at the first preview. And I got to talk with him, and he said things I'll never forget. And so I hold that with me. And it's wonderful that we get to perform his work on Broadway this season. You know, what a wonderful legacy for him in the last year of his life. Okay, so what was that first preview performance like? They're like, Stephen Sondheim is in the audience mm -hmm. tonight. Do the show. All right, well, I'm going to tell you a story. Okay. So you have a program here, oh, right? Yeah. And I, I saw, and uh, my producer, Chris Harper, the wonderful, told oh, wow. me that at intermission, <laughs> Stephen, he had seen me the year before, but it had been a long time, so he went, that Sarah is wonderful. How do I know her? Wait a minute. Oh, yeah, that's right. Like, he was just so sweet. And no. then later he told me... Um, he told me his new favorite moment in the show. Marion Elliott called me over and she said, Stephen has to tell you something. He's like, my new favorite moment in the show is when you throw that present. Ah, ha, ha, ha. You know, like he <laughs> loved it. So these are things I'll take with me for the rest of my life, you know? So that first night, it was a rock concert. Yeah. They stood up, the big spotlight on him. They cheered. I mean, Elvis is in the house, ladies and gentlemen. Totally. It was probably my best memory thus far of, of any performance was that night because of him. Do you remember the first time you had to sing for him in the rehearsal room? Was he at the audition? Like, what was right. that all like? Right. There was a time back in 2020 when we had to go through everything. With you him? Know? Yes. And he's sitting there. And of course, you're all just I, spelling out my swears. You're S-H-I-T-T. <laughs> your shorts, right? And because you just want to you want to do well. You don't want him to be disappointed, you know. And, and he, was, he couldn't have been lovelier. And I must say this, he, he left the room with a tear in his eye. He cried, literally yeah. cried, talking about George Firth, you know. And that's my large responsibility in the show is that big scene up front. And so he said, what you all are doing with it, with his words, means the world to me. Because in his opinion, he never got the respect he deserved. So he was always the first one to make sure to credit George. And so... Every time I do something like this, I make sure to do it too because Stephen would want me to. Yeah. 
Because yeah. I had seen the original production of Company numerous times on Broadway. I saw mm. Dean Jones. Oh. I saw Larry Kurt. Oh, hey now. And then at Westbury, I saw George Takiris. Wow. I mean, so I got to see these different productions. Yeah. You know, I saw Julie Wilson play yeah. Joanne. Yes, but it's yes. like George, for you know, like because Stephen always said that he never got the recognition that he should have gotten. Yeah. And I'm just glad that Company is back, and mm -hmm. it's just that he's getting that now. I think he is, yeah. Yeah. He, well, yeah. What is it like sharing the stage with this incredible, I call it the company, company of actors? It's wonderful. I mean, you look to your left and to your right, and I admire that person, I admire that person, and it's, uh, it's an embarrassment of riches, you know? So we are, I think everyone feels that way. Everyone yeah. has a great respect for their colleagues, and uh, you can sense that on stage, and I believe from the audience, you know? So. Which side is your dressing room on? Because I've spoken to a lot uh, of your fellow okay. co-stars uh, yes, that are like, this yes. is the right side of the house, yes. this is the left side of the house. Yes, so I'm on the uh, stage right side, so the, the uh, 45th Street side with the, yeah. with the windows that you can see visible from the street. Yeah. Who's so I get a floor? lot of light. So my floor uh, is Rashidra Scott, Nikki Renee Daniels, then me, then Tally Sessions and Matt Wall. And then Anisha Nagarajan, Brittany Coleman, and Catherine Allison. So they're all on my floor, plus the hair and makeup room. Yeah. So we have probably the largest floor. Um, and Katrina is right beneath one of right beneath me. And then uh, some of the men are up above on the next floor up. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Do you have a warm-up ritual? Does the show have one? Like, what do you do before you uh, go on? Okay. So there is a vocal and physical warm-up if you'd like. Sometimes I partake, but. Mostly for me, it's because of the jujitsu. I, I don't know if you guys know, I'm an athlete. <laughs> and I'm an Olympic athlete. And uh, I have to do Olympic size warm ups and cool downs and tape. Oh, I, 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 can KT tape sponsor me? I mean, my legs and my knees yeah. just wrap that nonsense. Yeah. And uh, I foam roll. I have a Theragun mini. You know, it's just, it's a lot of, it's a lot of maintenance for this old <laughs> Clydesdale. You know, I, yeah, it's a lot. All right, we're going to talk about Sarah. You are giving one of the most brilliant comedic performances oh. of this season as Sarah in Company. Thank you. What is it like living inside her, and how much fun is it playing her? It's so much fun. I have photographs of Barbara Berry on my walls. I think it's important to remember where you, where you came from sure. and to pay her respect any chance I get, as well as all my predecessors. But. For Sarah, it was important to me to uh, do it the way I saw it from the first audition because I really didn't think I was going to get it. Uh, I think Brian Cranston has a YouTube video that's gone viral about what an actor's job is. Yeah. You know, and I really believe in that. And so I really didn't audition to get the job. I auditioned the way I envisioned her. And by some stroke of luck, they got it. And they got me and they wanted that. So they kind of reconceived the part for Broadway and we put her in workout gear because I walked in with workout gear um, and uh, and we've it's been a collaboration ever since and Marion Elliott has always said yes to me about a lot of the physical comedy that I want to bring to it and in other words uh, I call it the, I hope I'm not boring you but the negative space the <laughs> negative space I really believe that a lot of humor and acting is what a character is coming in and out of and not just what's on the line and so she let me really experiment that, and that's where we found a lot of the, her addiction to exercise, and that's now part of the language of the piece. So it is a blast. It's so lovely to be trusted. It's so lovely to have such a wonderful collaboration and someone just letting you make your art, you know, and, and not stifling you and not trying to dim your light. That's Marianne Elliott, and I really appreciate her. Because you've added a whole personal side to Sarah because I just read the exclusive you gave to People magazine. Mm -hmm. And I thank you very much for doing this because you put yeah. a face on something that millions of people struggle with, which is anorexia yeah. that I didn't realize was a part of your life. Thank you. Yeah, yeah I, um, I remember having a sit down with Marianne and Katrina because we were talking about whether or not we needed this moment where I yeah. lift, lift my shirt. And I... I advocated for doing it and I said here's why it's really important for people to see themselves on stage and there's not a person who went through the pandemic no matter what size you are by the way who doesn't know the, how desperate we all were for a nice elastic waistband 
you yeah. know, that was our best friend. Um, and so when people see me, they're not laughing at me, they're laughing at themselves. They're laughing yeah. with me because we all know what that feels like. We also all know what it feels like to be picked on in the schoolyard and to feel less than. And uh, I actually talked to Catherine Allison, my, one of my wonderful other studies. We were talking about our fears and I said, yeah. you know, Catherine, what, I'm gonna cry. I said, Catherine, one of my fears is I hope I'm representative enough. And she gave me the best gift. She said, Jennifer, you are. Yeah. Because I can't possibly be every size. Yeah. I can't possibly look like every woman. But I can be a woman who knows what that pain is like from a very deep level. Yeah. And even if you don't see it in the words in the script, I believe in my heart that those layers are always there. And it's incumbent upon you to find them. So it's not just a singular one layered performance. Yeah. And uh, it's been an absolute joy to really get in there. And the last thing I'll say is I really believe in my heart that the best comedy is rooted in pain. And it, and if you, it, just, it just makes it so much meatier and juicier. So that, those are what I hope is coming through all of the very broad physical comedy that is necessary in the scene. That's why I said you're so brilliant at what you do in this show. <laughs> and like I said, it must be empowering yeah. and freeing also at the same oh, time, yeah. is it? Oh yeah, we spend, let's talk turkey yeah. now. Yeah. We spend a great deal of time for events like this. My, yeah. What am I gonna wear? What dress am I gonna wear? My hair is straight, Should, what lipstick? Well, blah. And you know, when you're on a red carpet, you yeah. know, and, and, and how many times we all go, am I gonna face tune this? Maybe I need a new filter. And meanwhile, like, how about, how about it's just fine? And wouldn't it be great when we get, if we get to a day where it's not brave to do these yeah. things? <laughs> I'm gonna take a picture without makeup. <laughs> You know, or yeah. guess what? I'm going to show off my body as is. It shouldn't be brave, yeah. but it still is. So we have to still, we have some work to do. But just what yeah. you do when you lift your yeah. oh your yeah, glass and you this, make that face. Oh yeah, we your, talk with yeah. it. Oh yeah, and Katrina and I have such a good time with it now. And then she tries to do it and it's just, <laughs> it's really become such a pleasure. And oh, one of the things we talked about when we did it is, I think, I can't speak for all men, but women do talk this way. And we talked about how important it is to have a body relationship. Women, we are disgusting and we, we, we talk about everything. And I think it's also important to show that. So we have the best time just being broads. Mm -hmm. You can see that. But Good. I, but I love Katrina. We yeah. have the best relationship on and off stage. Yeah. yeah. And you were talking about Marianne Elliott. She is the finest director. And like you said, you oh. delve into so many, yeah. like you said, the, the negative, the negative areas. The negative which space. Is, mm -hmm. Which is the most important thing about doing something, right? Well, that, yes, it's, a, it's an unimportant part, but Marianne is also a big believer in the technique of acting on the line. Yeah. So when you can marry those two things, that's what I mean about what a great collaboration she was yeah. to work with, because she believes in acting on the line, and as do I, but I also believe in making sure you address the negative negative space yeah. like, for, uh, like a painting Monet's painting it's not just about the lily pads it's what's between it you know let's talk about the water you know, yeah, yeah, <laughs> you know yeah. that kind of stuff no, yeah. I love that though just, yeah. just, just like everyone's having audience members can see themselves in some character and company that's yes. a great thing if not more than one I think that's it yeah. I think there's a cross-pollination quite a bit yeah. um, uh, so that that happens quite a bit and uh, I'm proud to be one of those people yeah kind of can't believe it sometimes like, ha feel very lucky. So we have to go back to Broadway debuts. They're really important. Mm -hmm. They only happen once. Yeah. And so many people couldn't make them during the pandemic, and they're making them now. Mm -hmm. You made yours in the 25th annual Putnam County Spelling Bee, mm -hmm. opposite mm -hmm. Mo Rocca. Yes. What do you remember, and how magical was that Broadway debut? It was so magical. You know, my mother, my late mother, was still alive, so that was a dream come true to have both my parents there yeah. for that very special night. My, my very, very favorite human beings were there for that moment. That was such a gift. And to do it with Mo was pretty heady stuff. And what's better is he's become one of my closest friends now. Yeah. Just, honestly, we text all the time. We saw each other uh, this summer, you know, in the park while I was practicing getting ready for company, and he was getting ready for fairy cakes. Yeah. So we um, we become good friends, and at that moment, I had no idea we would become such good friends, but we have. And uh, you never forget your first. Yeah. You never forget your first. It was such a. I'm gonna, I'm gonna cry again. <laughs> it was such a dream yeah. come true. It was such a dream come true. You work so hard, and so yeah. many people who are even more talented and maybe have even worked harder never get that luxury. Yeah. So I don't take it for granted for a second. And I'm really appreciative.
And then there was Shrek. How much mm -hmm. fun was it doing Shrek? Because you got to play mm -hmm. all these little, other, little great yeah, roles. Yeah, I was like the Julie Andrews part in the very beginning, and then I was the <laughs> Wicked Witch, which is not typecasting. Uh, but um, I got to work with Christopher Seaver, of course. Yeah. But we actually knew each other prior to that. I've known Seaver longer than I've known you. I've known him since 1994. Wait, did you do readings or something? Yes. You did like we did the first time I met him was a reading for something called About Face, yeah. and then in 2002 we did the first reading of the thing about which beca what became the thing about men. Yeah. He played the Ron Bomer part. He was Sebastian. So we talk all the time. We we get along like peas and carrots, and we we're so close, and there's such trust. Uh, but we've known each other almost 30 years, and I think that comes off on the stage too. Like we <laughs> love and fight like married people. <laughs> No, because I was going to ask you, the space you share with Christopher playing yeah. your husband and company yeah. just seems so natural. We're, we're, we, we, like, we, we sometimes think, should we tell our spouses that we're married now? I mean, it's not a romantic relationship, but everything else is married. Yeah. Yeah, and we check in every day, and we talk every day, and it's truly a collaboration. Yeah. And I couldn't land half the stuff I land if it weren't for him throwing me the ball so I could get the basket. Because as funny as he is, we, we're charged with a bit of a different energy in the scene. So I would say he's the Bud Abbott to my Lou Costello, and I'm so lucky. Yeah. yeah. Shrek was a lot of fun. Oh, yeah. Sorry if I didn't say that. It's all good. Let's go back. We'll edit that back. No, no. We're not, um, we're, we're, this um, is what goes no, okay. Christopher about to meet and Christopher. Yeah. And Shrek, then watching Shrek, Christopher in, in Shrek, too. That's Farquaad. I used to give him that old time. We did that sort of um, old timey 19 sort of lower Farquaad. Um, but we. Um, it was a lot of fun. It was a lot of hard work. I mean, yeah. being a fairy tale creature with all those prosthetics, you're like, whew. I mean, it was just. I think. I. I think if I. Sorry. If I think if I. Meet my demise. It's going to be from that red dye num number five glitter red lipstick. I. I have. I think it's still in there. Yeah. I do. Yeah. No, because like playing a fairy tale character, you got to do that when you did the Flintstones movie. Yeah, that was years ago yeah. in L.A. and that was fun. And I got to work with, oh, this is a good story. I got to work with Joan Collins. And I got to tell her on set at 4.30 in the morning, because she was in my scene, yeah. that I did my eighth grade book report on her autobiography, Past Imperfect. Yeah, I have that. Eighth yeah. grade. I was 13. What? Is, Mom? What? <laughs> she must have loved that. She did. I said, I, you know, I did a, she, I, when I told her I read her book, she said, every young actress should, darling. <laughs> Oh, and she came to set yeah. full beat. Oh, yeah. Oh, and she and I said, you are all made up. She's like, I was taught by the man who did Marilyn Monroe's makeup. I was like, damn, girl. I mean, she was, we talked about, we talked about, oh, we talked about yeah. everything. Because I knew her whole life story. Yeah. So I was going through the book in my head. I mean, her daughter, Katie's, Katie's car accident. Sure. I mean, you know, the Simon and Schuster thing where they oh, yeah. sued. I think it was Simon Schuster. I don't, yeah. don't sue us. Um, but, you know, because there was a whole lawsuit there yeah. and she was. With the books. And I said, we, su we supported you, Joan. And she went, really? Because I almost got an ulcer from that. I'm like, oh, so we're girlfriends now. Okay, amazing. <laughs> it was great. Because she's our favorite. My husband and I, she's our favorite. So we, I mean, we live I, at Dynasty. Hello. All I did, I, I did a movie last year that's coming out in the Tribeca Film Festival, I think, in June. It's Ray Romano's yeah. um, de directorial debut. Yeah. And there's a dress. I'm going to text you. Okay. I'm going to send you. I have a dress in that where I I look like, it's, my name's Patsy, and I swear, and I have a picture superimposed where it's, where it's um, Alexis, Crystal, and Patsy Carrington. <laughs> Shoulder pads, satin. I mean, I look just like yeah. them. I'm going to send it to you. It's fabulous. Oh, we're going to run it in here. We're going to run it in this. You think? Yeah, you give us a picture, we'll put it in the piece. I don't know if I'm allowed to do Am oh, I allowed right. to? Because the movie hasn't come out no, yet. No, probably not. We can talk about it, though, at least. That's great. Oh. It's like I love talking to all these people, like me and Brian Cranston last yeah. night. I'm like, Brian, you grew this beard. What's it for? Is it Richard's for a role in a film? But yes. I can't tell you yet. Oh, you saw him last night. Oh, he's been on oh, every carpet. Oh, my gosh. Do you know, I love him so much. Yeah. At the Drama League luncheon several years ago, I told him, I said, I said, can you do my, on the dais, I said, can you do my outgoing voicemail when this is over? Because we were both not, and you know, like, you know, hey, this is Jennifer's cell phone. She, yeah. she is the danger. And, you know, just, I just wanted to Walter White. And he told me, he said, come see me after. And, of course, I didn't because I'm not going to do that to him. And I really regret it. So You'll maybe have, right, he'll maybe you could this. hook up. We're, we're maybe hook this okay, all up. great. Brian yeah. Cranston, you have to do Jennifer. He Samaritz. said he would. All right, then. I was the I was okay. the nitwit on, yeah. at, on the the Senate day as luncheon <laughs> saying mm, I love you. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> He's my favorite actor. Yeah. I referenced him before. See? Remember? 
So like, who's your favorite actor, Joan Collins? I, your I got actress? company. Okay. <laughs> but I, I remember I got company because yeah. of his advice, because I was like, I'm going to do what I think it should yeah, be. See? I'm not going to try to get the job. And you got the job. Um, hello. I love that. Yeah. Okay. okay. Now we have to talk about, let's see, yeah. Disaster the Musical. Yes. Yes. Okay. How career changing was that? It changed everything. Because you stopped the show every single performance. Oh, thank you so much. Yeah. It was a great role, made even better because it was written by colleagues that yeah. are like family. And, um, you know, it was, it was a pinch me moment. Again, to be in an ensemble of all of my idols. Yeah. And Faith Prince has become and remained a great friend. And um, it was the role of a lifetime, you know, and um, I'm just grateful when I think back on that experience, you know, and I think it's helped me get other work yeah. too, you know, it's just so many times it's, again, there are so many talented people out there who just don't get the, sh the break, who don't get the platform. So I, I'm the first to say how lucky I am that that all worked out the way it did. I mean, and yes. it, it, your thank sister you. Mary Downey was just, I, I see it play in my head. I see oh, it with the slot you. machines, I can see it all play thank out in my head you. again. Thank you, I, I loved her dark, yeah. repressive nature <laughs> and uh, leading into the song. And I think that's what made the song yeah. so successful. It was actually all the very <laughs> under the surface <laughs> trauma <laughs> before the release yeah. that was so satisfying. Yeah, totally. <laughs> we, yeah, the dark side. I love the dark side. You do like the dark side. I do. You can't have the light without it. Yeah. Don't be scared. Don't be scared of the dark. Don't be scared. Well, well then there's Hello, Dolly. Yes. Ernestina oh, opposite Ernestina Bette Midler, Midler, David Hyde Pierce, yes. and of course working with director Jerry Zaks. I mean, that had to be one yes. of the greatest things. Yes. Just to have that experience. Like, yes. What was that like working with them? And well, being a part it of was that? so big, right? You're like, it's Bette Midler. What are, are you kidding me? Um, and I had done Sister Act with Jerry. Yeah. And this was a wonderful experience because we really got to sink our teeth into the comedy. And let me just say something about Jerry's acts. One of the most satisfying things in the world is earning Jerry's trust. Yeah. Because he wants you to trust him. And if you do, he'll give it right back to you. So we, we, our, relationship just, our relationship just blossomed over that experience. Um, Bette was wonderful. Um, all of her um, successors were wonderful. David Hyde Pierce um, was my mother's favorite actor, and he knew that. Yeah. So getting to, to be his specific scene partner in that pod every night was a dream come true. He's also remained a friend. Yeah. And when people ask me, what do you want to achieve in this business? I said, off stage, I, want to, I said, I want to be as successful a human being as I believe David Hyde Pierce is, and then I would have considered myself as English. <laughs> <laughs> then I would have considered myself a success, period. Because I always wondered, <laughs> before the drapes opened, what, you, what would you two do in there before the scene started? Well, oftentimes the, um, the waiters, of yeah. course, are running around the back. So we would be preset, and we were probably saying ridiculous things to yeah. them and making sure it was okay that we were, yeah. you know, like, we're disgusting. Are you okay with that? You know, that kind of stuff. You know, we're just, and um, anyway, and they would laugh. Um, our friend Robert Hartwell. Yeah. In particular, we had a routine with him yeah. that, and it was just kept us all in stitches every night. So we would, you know, mess around, and then we'd go inside. And really, the, once we were set, there really wasn't a lot of time for talking. Yeah. Um, but then we had our again our physical comedy science. We had our set beats, and then the hoochie, <laughs> the hoochie coochie, which <laughs> I got to do with him, which was a dream come true. Yeah. It was hilarious, you know. Who's the biggest prankster at company? Uh, Christopher Fitzgerald. Yes, before we come out of the box in Act One, he really lives to make Patty laugh. So he had fake SHIT the other day that he put on the table. <laughs> he had a fake finger that swelled, swelled up to here, and he hit it, and what he did was he hit the table like bang! And he's like, oh, oh my God, oh, and this giant, and it's right before we come out, Bobby, Bobby, because he is trying to make people laugh. So it's, it's him. It works, doesn't it? Oh, yeah, I mean, but he's, a, you know, a, you know, Commedia dell'arte clown, so he, yeah. he's always pulling out magic tricks and yeah. cards and, yeah. I love that. Okay, you mentioned Jerry's act, sister act. That had yes. a lot of fun. That was the first time you worked with Jerry? That was the first time, yes, yeah. mm -hmm. and it was a lot of fun. Uh, I really embraced being part of the ensemble, 
you know, part of this business, and I'm glad we're talking about this, it's also about your life. Yeah. And saving money, and maybe you want to, if you're lucky enough, maybe you can buy a little place to live, or a car, or a nice coat, whatever the case may be. And I remember telling the choreographer at one point, he wanted to put me down center on something, only because he felt bad. He's like, oh, I need to give you something to do. He's like, I was like, I am fine. Put me where you need me. If you want me to be a stained glass window, no problem. You know, like, and it ended up being, I was like, you just have to be a team player, yeah. and especially when you're in the ensemble, because it's so uh, not the glory gig. Yeah. It's very difficult, and you're understudying, and thank God understudies are getting a lot of applause this season, because it's oftentimes thankless. Yeah. You know, so the best way, to, the advice I give for anyone in the ensemble, too, is uh, have fun, and also make sure you have a love object outside of work that you can focus on if we're, I mean, hopefully most people yeah. are happy at work, I would hope, it's Broadway, it's yeah. pretty great. But um, <laughs> it, when it does get challenging, because like any job can, to remember to have goals outside of work. You know? Got it. Yeah. And then Mean Girls, you went into Mean Girls. Yes, most people don't know this. Um, right after the Tony Awards in 2016, I had gotten a call from Tina to do a reading for Casey of the show. So yeah. I was the adult woman track. And then I got Hello Dolly two months later in August of 2018. And I want to be quick to say, I don't mean to imply that yeah. it would have been me, but I was definitely off the table at that point. And it ended up being um, my friend and colleague, the amazing Tony nominee, Carrie Butler. And uh, that was the right person yeah. to open that show. And then as luck would have it, she got Beetlejuice six months into the run. Yeah. So I came in and did it for almost a year and a half. Yeah. This show that was already in my uh, repertoire, so to yeah, speak. In your so, DNA, sort of. Yeah, and so it was great to come back. And honestly, it was probably the happiest I've ever been in the sense of it was just a great job. Yeah. Sometimes they're just great jobs because I was at an age where I could have, I had just enough funny stuff to do, just enough to sing, but not the burden of, oh, I can't talk to you, I can't go out tonight. You know, uh, <laughs> you, know you, could, you could have a life. Yeah. You could have a life. And also because I was so much older than the younger girls, yeah. here's another fun fact. Sometimes when you're close in age, sometimes there can be some drama. Yeah. You know, that's happened to me on other shows when I was younger. And now, because I'm so much older, I mean, I was sort of like the oracle from The Matrix. It's like they'd come to me with their problems, you know, yeah. or my hair up in a bun with chunky bits of amber. Come talk to Grandma. You know, like it was so great to be in that position, you know. No, oh, I'll help you. What are your boy troubles, you know? <laughs> Just not being a threat yeah. at all. As I'm like, let me, let me get my AARP, yeah. my AARP card out, girls, and I hope this doesn't threaten you, yeah. you know. <laughs> anyway. It just looked like you were having so much fun on that, too. I was, again, it was the best job. Yeah. That's another reason why I went into companies so relaxed, because I was so happy. Yeah. You know what I mean? I'm like, if I get it, great. If I don't, that's okay. Exactly. You know? You also work in film and television, doing yes. incredible stuff on Younger yes. and The Good Wife yes. and The Law and Orders and some great film work. Yes. I love to ask stage actors, did you grasp the art of cameras right away or did, it, did, they, did they tell you like, less, do less? I, a little bit of both. I mean, you have to use, you know, you still have to in my opinion, act from the you know the inside out okay. and, and tell your truth, even if it's smaller. But I did ask my my friend Tina Fey for some advice uh, during the pandemic. I there were two gigs I really came close to and lost. Well, I'm just going to tell you, I have nothing to hide. One of them was I think I was the second choice. I want to say I was the yeah. second choice. I was right at the end for the role of Mamie Fish in The Gilded Age, and they gave it to Ashley. Ooh, I've done Atkinson. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Who's wonderful. So yeah. I begrudge her nothing, right? Yeah. But but you know, when you know when you're like you can just taste it, right? Yeah. And I have like four auditions or something. Yeah. And and of course, you know, all my friends are doing it. So I'm like, I want them to find me something else. Uh, because find I really I want to be on two. it so badly. Yeah. Um, but anyway, that and I said to Tina, I was like, Do you have any advice for me? And she was just like, just don't use your hands as much. You know what I mean? On camera. And the thing is, it's interesting because on stage, it's one of the pieces of advice I give actors. Just remember your hands. Your hands are very funny. You do this. I mean, it can be funny, right? I told that to Beanie during Hello, Dolly. I said, watch Bette's hands. And she actually talked about it in a Vogue interview after that. I said, listen, you know, she's so confident. It's like, you, you know, she acts all the way down to her fingertips. And that's something I try to do. It's like people sometimes forget yeah. about 
their extremities and they don't know what to do with them. But Tina's advice was on camera. She said, if it helps you hold a vase, and I'll kid you not, in my final callback for the Gilded <laughs> Age, I, they didn't see it, but I was holding a vase. <laughs> All that the secrets. Great. You're getting all the secrets of Barbara Walters. I love it. Well, I use my hands all the time. I did this whole interview. I've been like this. But that's because but these sleeves are amazing. Sleeves They're so good. I love that. Aren't they good? I love them. Okay, okay. my final yeah. question for you is yeah. if you could sum up the best part of being a part of company, what's it been for you? Okay, there's many best parts. But the best part is that when I was 11 years old, I first discovered the brilliance that is Barbara Berry. It was in a televised HBO production of um, Barefoot in the Park. I think she told me it was in Seattle. And it was this act two scene that she had with Richard Thomas that you can still find on YouTube. Please go. And all the young girls I knew at 11 wanted to be like the Bess Armstrong part. And I was like, not me. I want to be her, you know, or Neil Simon, because I also like to write. <laughs> but I just, I, I was obsessed with her timing. Yeah. The whole, um, you know, I feel like we've died and gone to heaven. But I feel like we've died and gone to heaven. Only we had to climb up to get there. You know, I, not funny. She was funny. I, know, I mean, yeah. you know, like sitting there after a night out that nearly destroyed them. Please go watch. So the fact that I get to do the role that she originated makes me feel really warm and tingly inside because I love her, yeah. you know? I spoke to her on the carpet that night because I love Barbara Barry yeah. as, as much as you do too. Yeah. I mean, it just, and she was so excited to see you do Sarah. She sent me a gift. She sent yeah. me a, a W.H. Auden poem. She wrote me a card. Um, we corresponded yeah. afterwards and um, she couldn't have been more generous in what she wrote. She said how I made it my own. Yeah and how, how funny it was, and her whole family loved it. So she's so generous of spirit as well. This is like vintage stuff. This is what I love here. They also have like a vintage, like oh. the first copy of Boys now, in the Band. Now this, yeah. this, I have right. this book, yeah. and of all the acting styles, yeah. that's the one that I ascribe to the most. Uta Hagen, yeah. Yes, because it's a little combination of inside and outside. You know what I mean? Inside, your, using your own experiences, but not getting too precious about it. I sat with I her to like, like, Makes sense down. to me. I sat with her you to did. Hotel. I was so afraid to do this, because I heard all this stuff. She was the sweetest person in the world. Yeah. Uh, I'm a GB, big fan. George Bernard Shaw with her little dog, and she smoked yeah. through the whole interview, and we had the time of our life. I love She's that. She's the best. Oh, I love and this that. Is the big, I love the explosion here, right? Yeah, that's great. Yeah. Now they have a barista bar here. Look oh, at this. Good. I know. Yeah. But I want to show you Tommy Kale's uh, window card collection is back oh, here. Oh, great. This is like, okay. So we're going to take you back here. Okay. So we have done our first piece on the drum book shop. This is one of my favorite pieces here because Tommy Kale was left all of these posters mm -hmm. from, a, uh, I believe he was an agent. Oh. So this is just really cool. But the other nice thing, if you have mm -hmm. to go towards the bathrooms, come this way. This is really cool. So one of these okay. days, we actually have to do an interview by the bathroom. Because look at this wall. And look who's here. Oh, I look, know. Wait. Hey, I know her. Do you know her? I know her. I know her. Fabulous. I know her. I know her. But check uh -huh. this wall out of yeah. all of his favorites. Oh, that's great. Isn't this, look at this. And I did see the original company poster on the Out other there, side. Yeah, and yeah. Hello, Dolly. Hello, Dolly here. Right, look at this. That would so. be a fun game. You should get someone who's literally been in every show. In to every <laughs> show. But I would say, how can I do an interview back here? We'd have to put the camera in the bathroom with the door open and shoot here against the wall, right? You can do anything you I set can, your right? mind to. See, that's what I learned from this? this one a long time ago. Set yeah. your mind to it and just do it, right? Thank you. But isn't this great? This is great. I love it. All right. I just want to take you Thank on to you. You know, the bathroom tour with all the posters. Gwen and Sweet yes. Charity. But again, here's the original. Like yeah. You said the original company. And there, of course, is your Barbara Barry right here, which is there's, so great. There's my girl. There's your girl right here, right? Yeah, I love that. This is great. Thank so, you. what time do you get to the theater? What time do you do your warm up? Oh, you're going to laugh at yeah. me. They laugh at me. I, I'm an early bird. Yeah. Early is on time. So, for a 7 o'clock show, I'll be there by 4. That's like cheetah. Yeah. Cheetah is the same way. I got to get my head screwed yeah. on. I don't like coming to work thinking about other things. Yeah. I like to be calm. It's like waking up early before the kids get up, kind sure. of, you know, that kind of thing. Before Christopher Fitzgerald gets there and like I said, something else, th the kids. Before the kids get up. <laughs> this has been amazing. Thank I cannot you. believe, you know, like I said, we've known each other for a long time since yeah. I love you perfect now change. 
And for those watching, she, again, she is giving one of the most brilliant comedic performances of this season as Thank Sarah you. in Marianne Elliott's brilliant production of Stephen Sondheim and George Firth's beloved musical company. If you haven't seen it, get a ticket. And if you've seen it, go again and watch how magic is done eight times a week.